want you to imagine something. If you didn't have any taste buds, okay, you couldn't taste anything, do you think that you'd still crave sugar? The crazy thing is there's some evidence that is now demonstrating that you probably would. See, we think it's all about our sweet tooth and cravings and what's hitting our tongue. Well, there is a study that was published in the journal Cell. Now, this is fascinating. Now, the study was done in rodents, but that still tells us a lot, right? Still tells us a lot. It has to further be confirmed in humans. Okay, that's the way of science. We have to, I have to put that out there, full disclaimer. But it is fascinating stuff and is demonstrating that it's less about the taste one receptor member two and taste one receptor member three that are associated with sweet tooth uh, than we thought. It's less about that and more about what is happening in our brain. This is wild stuff. So we'll get into that. Hey, today's video is sponsored by a 15% off discount to seed probiotics. It's actually a symbiotic, which means it has a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. And you can tell that by the capsule inside of a capsule. Okay. So if you look at the pill itself, it actually has a capsule and then a small capsule inside. So it has a multi-stage delivery. This is really important if you're looking at overall colonization, like being able to get the bacteria where you want it to go. Right? So with C, they've done extensive research. They are leading a lot of the microbiome research, which is that, that speaks accolades to me. That's what I look for, which is why they have Thomas DeLauer's stamp of approval and why you get a discount when you try them out. So that link is down below 15% off seed daily symbiotic. If you use that link down below, trust me, you won't be disappointed. They are really, really cool. And they know what they're talking about, which is really important to me as an evidence-based YouTuber. So we know that these taste receptors have a strong link with the brain, right? When we have something sweet, we satisfy that itch, right? Well, it used to be said that, okay, an artificial sweetener would still kind of satisfy that same itch. Well, it doesn't. It satisfies like the itch that we might get with, uh, you know, for craving something sweet with our actual mouth, but it's actually not satisfying the portion of the brain that we thought. So we look at this study that was published in Cell. It's really fascinating. They took a look at mice and they gave them a couple different things. They gave them water, regular water, or they gave them like a sugar water, a sugar solution. Okay, invariably, the mice chose the sugar, sugar solution. So what does that tell us first? It tells us what, okay, like these are non-thirsty mice, by the way. So they took uh, mice that were adequately hydrated and were not thirsty. If they had an option for water or sugar water, they always went for the sugar water. Okay, well, here's where it gets really, really weird. Okay, they gave them an option for artificially sweetened water. Okay, they didn't even want that. They wanted the sugar water. Okay, now these were mice that could taste. Okay, so these were mice that said, okay, I want this sugar water. So if it was something sweet related, we'd say, oh, they'd go for the artificial sweetener. They'd go for that, right? Nope, they still want the sugar water. Here's where it gets really intriguing though. Then they took what are called knockout mice. Knockout mice are mice that do not have, in this particular case, what are called taste one receptor member two and taste one receptor member three, which are the taste receptors directly linked with sweet in our palate and our tongue that connect to that region of our brain that gives us that dopamine fix when we have something sweet. When they used mice that didn't have those taste receptors, they still went for the sugar water. They still went for the sugar water over regular water or over artificially sweetened water when they couldn't even taste. What this tells us is that the sodium glucose linked transporter that actually like sends the signal after we've received you know, glucose or gotten glucose, is what is doing the trick. That is what is telling the brain, this is what I, this, you're getting what you want. You get your dopamine fix. That is what is so unbelievably wild about this. So when we're craving something sweet, it really is psychological, but it's not just psychological. It is survival related. We need glucose to survive. That doesn't mean you have to eat a super carbohydrate rich diet. As you might know, I follow a low carb diet, but it means that glucose is imperative to survival. So something that like, if we are getting this signal, this dopamine itch being scratched, that we are satisfying a survival need, it is going to just solidify that response and make it stronger and stronger that that's what we want, right? So it's interesting. So how do you get around this kind of thing? It's difficult. Like it really comes down to more of a psychological play. Like what can you do to psychologically not want sugar or to train your body to be in a better position? It comes down to things like fasting, taking hot showers, taking cold showers, exercising, eating earlier in the day. So you're satiating, eating less carbohydrates if you're not active. So you're not stimulating that response just out of like passive notion, just because it feels good. It's interesting because we're not necessarily craving things with our mouth. 
our brain is craving it above and all else for a survival purpose. That is what is wild. So yes, it does come down to willpower to a certain degree, but it also comes down to conditioning ourselves to be able to have other foods to get that dopamine itch scratched. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I will see you tomorrow.